Do you believe in dreams? I mean, if you had a dream that denied all logic and all the evidence, how long would it take you to stop believing in the dream and start believing with your eyes and your brain? I had a dream about an angel one night that I wanted with all my heart to believe. If I could be sure that that dream were true, I knew I could face all the trouble I was in without buckling under. I guess you know the kind of trouble I was in, too. Mary and I were betrothed. You do not have anything quite like our betrothals here in your country. It is more than being engaged. It is a binding commitment that can only be ended by divorce. But when you are betrothed, you do not live together. And there is no, uh, no physical intimacy. So there we were, just betrothed. But Mary was looking more and more pregnant every week. And I had not done anything. Why, I had never felt so hurt and embarrassed and confused in all my life. As a matter of fact, I have always taken great pains never to allow myself to get into a compromising situation. I have tried to be a righteous man. I have always believed that God is a just God, and that he smiles on those who obey him with his blessings. And it seemed that God had been smiling upon me People respected my carpentry skills and gave me enough business to afford the necessities of life. I had good friends, and God had given me Mary as my future wife. Mary had the most beautiful smile and eyes that danced with life. Mary had a heart of gold, and I knew that she loved and respected me. I thanked God every night for giving me such a wonderful young woman to be my wife. But then, for reasons I could not explain, God's smile upon me had turned into a frown, and everything started to go wrong, very wrong. Mary was pregnant. Oh, she pleaded with me to believe her, that an angel had told her that, this child was conceived by God and was to be God's son. And now what would you think if someone gave you an explanation like that as to why she was pregnant? I have always been a man of reason. I do not get carried away with strange ideas. Mary seemed so sincere as she begged me to believe her and so desperate. I wanted to believe it and to believe that I was the only one for her. But you cannot base your decisions on wishes and displays of emotion, stories of angels. The night that Mary told me she was pregnant, God had never seemed so far away from me. My dreams, my heart, my faith were all crushed into a thousand broken pieces. I went out into the night and gazed at the stars spread out above me like a huge canopy. God, what are you doing to me? I thought I was following your law, your holy will. I thought Mary was your gift to me. Why is this happening? And do you know what answer I got back? Dead silence. Nothing. The sky was empty. And I was alone. It is hard for me to admit this to you, even now. But I thought about doing a horrible thing. I thought about tying a rope around my neck, jumping from a tree, joining the emptiness of that vast darkness that surrounded me 
Would not that be better than my pain? Oh, but our law strictly forbids taking your own life. Our law seemed to know of despair and loss of faith. But could the law hold me accountable when the giver of that law, God himself, was unjust or deaf or gone? And I did not know if the law was worth anything anymore. But I had nothing else to go by, so I clung to it like an anchor in a storm. The law gave me two choices with how to handle an unfaithful woman. I could publicly expose her as an adulteress and watch her be sentenced to stoning. Oh, but I could not do that to my Mary, no matter what she had done. Or I could give her papers of divorce in the presence of two witnesses. Yes, that is what I would do. I would find two people that I could trust to keep things as quiet as possible. It was while I was considering who would make the best witnesses that I had my strange dream. An angel, glowing with brightness, stood above my bed and called to me. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. For what is conceived in her is of God's spirit. She shall give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, which means the Lord saves. For he shall save his people from their sins. When I awoke, that dream seemed so vivid in my mind. But did I dare to believe it? Was God really speaking to me? Or was it my wishes taking control of my imagination? As something brought to mind words spoken long ago by the prophet Isaiah to King Ahaz, who had lost his faith in the face of his enemies who were plotting his downfall. Isaiah said, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give birth to a son. And he shall be called Emmanuel. Isaiah's message was that even in the midst of Ahaz's darkness and despair, God would make his presence known in the birth of a child. And his name, Emmanuel, would be a reminder of God's presence. Emmanuel means God is with us. But could God be with me when life had plunged me into darkness? Could I dare to believe in a sign that no one else could see and that I could not even prove to myself? You probably never realized how hard it was for me to really believe that which I wish so much to be true. I knew that if I believed in that dream long enough to act on it, I would face the ridicule of all the people. <laughs> and I was right. When I did not divorce Mary, of course, everyone assumed that I had gotten her pregnant. And my reputation as an honest, law-abiding man was erased one stroke. Business really dropped off. I could no longer say that God was making sure I got what I needed to live on. I tried to explain my dream about the angel to a few trusted friends. Dreams, Joseph. Everyone has dreams. If only you had divorced Mary like the law says, you could have at least started over and kept your reputation. Then they shook their heads. Well, it is too late for that now. Ah, my friends were no help to me. So I tried to explain everything to the rabbi. Joseph, I have never known anyone in our time to receive a message from God in this way. Although I have known those who would like us to think that they have. But Joseph, I know that you, you are an honest man. If this is of God, he will show you that he is with you. You can be sure of that. He will show you. 
The rabbi's words seemed wise and true, but those words churned up feelings of worry and doubt as I heard Caesar's decree that I was to go to Bethlehem to enroll for the tax, just when Mary was nearly ready to deliver. And Mary and I had no one left in the world except each other and our dreams of angels. We had to be together. Surely God knew this. But once again, God seemed to be frowning upon us. We had to travel to Bethlehem. If this is of God, he will show you that he is with you. Was God with us? The rabbi's words churned up feelings of anger and frustration as we made that long, hard journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem with Mary bone-weary and hurting with every bump and turn, with the donkey being stubborn and the cold night winds blowing through our garments as if they were fishing nets. If this is of God, he will show you that he is with you. Was God with us? The rabbi's words swept me with a feeling of helpless loneliness as I frantically searched Bethlehem for a bed that Mary might deliver our homeless baby. If this is of God, he will show you that he is with you. Was God with us when all I could find was a dung-splattered stable hollowed out of a cold and dark cave with skittish animals threatening to trample Mary and our helpless baby? What had become of my dream that this child was conceived by God and was to be God's son? How long would you hold on to a hope, to a promise, to your faith? when everything your mind told you flew in the face of it. How long? I looked towards Mary, who was nursing the baby and trying to keep him warm. And I began to wonder, what if we could not find enough food for Mary to eat to produce milk? And what if it got too cold to keep the baby warm with the clothes that we had brought? I felt like a terrible provider. If God was the father of this child, he was not doing much of a job providing for his son either. The candlelight caught Mary's eyes as she looked towards me. Those eyes that used to dance with life were now flowing with tears. We were two good law-abiding people whose lives and dreams had been shattered. Why? Was God mocking us? Or was he just gone? I should have given the baby his name by now. Jesus was what the angel had told me to name him. The Lord saves. The Lord saves. How could I name him that after all that had happened? When Mary laid the baby down into the manger, he began to cry. He knew this place was barely fit for an animal. But then, above the crying, we heard the voices and footsteps outside. My heart began to race and my fists were clenched when a shepherd's face appeared, rough and weather-beaten, but with such a look of innocent wonder in his eyes that my hands began to relax right away. Is there a baby in here? The baby's crying gave him his answer. Here he is. Here who is, I said. This is our baby. Why, yes, I'm sure that is right. Of course he is your baby. But an angel told us that he was born to us as well, to be our Savior, the Messiah. An angel told you that. They all shook their heads sheepishly. Yes, can you believe it? An angel talking to us. And not just one angel. We saw a host of angels, and we heard them singing as well. I know it sounds crazy, but we all saw it just the same way. Can we see the baby now? Please. 
as I nodded, they all spilled into the stable like an excited bunch of young boys. They knelt down in front of that tiny baby of ours. And they began to thank God and to pray as if they were in a holy place. As I watched these shepherds, the rabbi's words came to me one more time. If this is of God, he will show you that he is with you. You can be sure of that. He will show you. I sat down beside Mary and took her trembling hand in mine. What did all of this mean? Could this tiny baby, born in the cold and dark cave so far from home, born to a couple whose faith had been shaken to the core, born to a people who lived under the power of pagan Rome, Could this be God's Son, the Messiah, the Savior? Could God be coming to us in the form of a fragile human being to be with us in our darkness and our suffering and somehow show us the way to the light? I got on my knees and took my place next to these shepherds as we watched this tiny baby sleeping peacefully in the manger. What is his name? One of them whispered to me. His name is Jesus. It means the Lord saves. God is with us. His name is Jesus. It means the Lord saves. His name is Jesus. <laughs>